for joining um, today's session and very warm welcome. Um, today's webinar is a really exciting one. We have Tim Jadine and Kim Spann here from Michael Page and Engineers Australia respectively. They will be speaking on um, a number of key insights, mainly around what a career or studying in the engineering space looks like in Australia and also um, more about Engineers Australia as the peak body organization and you know how having that recognition under EA and um, and EA membership can be valuable for aspiring engineers but um, I will leave it to um, our presenters to share further in a bit before we get into that I would like to just quickly um, go over some black blackboard notification and sound settings so we do recommend everyone watching um, the session live here um, to turn off all notifications before we get started um, since you know we anticipate um, some pop-up notifications sound notifications to come up um, you know as the session runs on so you know to um, turning off um, all of that will help yourself benefit from the session without um, you know those distractions to do this it's uh, really simple um, hit that purple bar um, at the bottom of your screen and then click on that cock icon at the bottom right um, go to notification settings and make sure you're unticking all the notification options I've um, you know we have circled there on the screen and I guess similarly um, you know as we mentioned at the very start if you have any questions we are obviously happy um, for you to leave them in the chat box as the session runs the the the, inter the interaction sorry is definitely appreciated from our end but we will aim to get to most of them um, during the Q&A session that we have um, um, at the very end so please be patient um, um, until that time um, with regards to the presentation slides and session recordings, we get asked a lot about this. Yes, we will send out a copy of today's um, session slides as well as the recording to everyone who has registered for the event. And you can expect um, our team to um, send that across to you within one to two business days um, from today. Um, if you do not see it in your inbox um, after that time window, just make sure you check your junk folder because it very well might be sitting there. Um, yeah, that's um, for the housekeeping side of things. Uh, just to briefly introduce um, us as EIT, um, you know, if you are joining our webinars for the very first time, welcome. Um, we are um, one of the only institutes in the world specializing in engineering. Currently, we deliver a range of programs, um, mainly within the core disciplines of civil mechanical, electrical, and industrial automation engineering. And um, they pretty much cover short courses, VET, um, and higher education qualifications. We also uh, recently um, introduced four graduate diplomas um, as part of our postgraduate uh, qualification options. So very exciting. Um, you can check that out um, on our website. We you know, are always looking to offer new courses, which will you know, potentially help address the changing technologies, industry developments, and needs of the workplace um, for engineers um, um, and aspiring students. Um, and all our courses are offered online um, and on campus itself um, for selected qualifications, which means students have that option, you know, to study from wherever um, they are in the world. But then they also can experience studying engineering in Australia um, if they so choose to. Um, and we will get around speaking more on um, that on campus side of things later in the session. So, all right, yeah, that was just a bit of a short introduction from me. Um, I'll pass the time over to Tim now. Okay, hello everybody and welcome. Uh, I believe there's about 68 participants, so really excited to have everybody on board and more excited to um to talk to everybody that's um that's involved in this part in this webinar the opportunities that are available to you within uh, particularly western australia but in general um nationally australia how the engineering market is looking um what we're experiencing as recruiters so a brief introduction to myself my name is tim jardine um and I think it's quite relevant for this audience uh, to let you know again, I don't want to bang on about it too much, but um, I was born in Southern Africa. 
I realize there's a lot of African participants in this webinar. Um, so I'm really excited to sort of um, communicate the possibilities and good news stories that have come across, um, not only in engineering, but um, with Michael Page as well, uh, being, um, you know, some good case studies uh, involved in that. So welcome and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, now, what I'll do, oh, there you go. Um, so that's our, our cover page. Um, what I do is I am a recruiter. I'm a senior consultant with Michael Page, whose head office is over in uh, Perth in the CBD. That's where I am at the moment, the central business district. My role at uh, Michael Page is to speak to um, electrical engineering candidates um, and help them find their dream role within the electrical engineering industry. Um, I also work with uh, clients um, that are looking to place those sort of talented candidates. Um, so it's a very interesting role. Uh, by no means at all, and I want to make this extremely clear to everybody that's going to ask me some technical questions. I did not study engineering, um, so what I am, um, well, what I think I'm good at is introducing people um, to other people that can create opportunities. So that's what I am very passionate about: is creating opportunities for people um, and helping people uh, find the role that they are aspiring to to go into. So that's what I do for a living. Um, it's a very fun job. Um, you get to hear a lot of different um, roles that are happening, even within the electrical engineering space. And I'll, I'll go into that a little bit and um, how the engineering market is, is changing and adapting, particularly to how um, the, the whole world has been affected by uh, the pandemic, uh, to be honest. And nothing, no industry, in my opinion, has been the same since. Um, and that's no different for the engineering industry, whether we, we're talking about electrical, mechanical project, um, control and automation, that sort of thing. However, since the pandemic, um, the projects that have been developed and, and funded within Western Australia in particular, and I apologize for only speaking about Western Australia, for those who are thinking about going um, over to the Melbourne campus with EIT, there's just as many opportunities over there, I assure you. But Western Australia is very much a mining resource allocated market. So a lot of the candidates that we'll be speaking to uh, would be revolving around uh, the mining organization, whether that's coming from a consultancy side or from an operator side. So I'll get into that a little bit um, as we go. So we'll get through that first slide. But uh, that is me and that is what Michael Page does. So, <clears throat> What we do is that we also look at where future engineering careers could be. So if you're thinking about studying in a degree with EIT and you're thinking about, okay, well, when I finish, is that going to be an investment worth making? Um, I'm here to tell you that it, it is. Um, it's an extremely um, viable market. Engineering is a very popular um, qualification to get within Australia. However, there is a shortage of us, uh, of them, excuse me, uh, of candidates that are uh, qualified engineers and more importantly recognized by Engineers Australia and the National Engineering Register, which um, we'll touch over a little bit later. So since this pandemic that's affected so many organizations and individuals and engineers themselves, employers have been competing for candidates. And when I say candidates, that is um, essentially once you have finished your degree and you're eligible and recognized to work as an engineer within Australia and you've done and the hours that are necessary for you to um, proceed with an engineering career, uh, which is extremely exciting. Um, can, uh, employers are competing for those uh, for you once you finish those sort of qualifications. Uh, and it's not only based on salary alone anymore um, or sustainable energy. There used to be um, sort of aspects that employers or clients could offer candidates that would make it more enticing for that candidate to move over to that organization. There is still an aspect of whether you're an operator or um, a consultant a company. Um, obviously, the preference for an engineer would to be work for um, an operator such as a BHP, a Rio Tinto, FMG, Roy Hill, for example. Um, which we work with um, Michael Page um, as uh, maintenance and reliability in the electrical space and mechanical and project work. Um, so we're working a lot with that. However, these 
even operators um, are not relying on their brand anymore and the popularity of um, you know where the candidates want to go. They are offering unique um, sort of um, perks uh, for their uh, for their talent or their candidates, and they introduce soft motivators or nice to haves. Um, in now engineering, I, I guess, flexible uh, working arrangements on a FIFO basis. Excuse me if you're not sure what FIFO means, um, but that means a fly in, fly out um, arrangement where you would be based in Perth. Oh, sorry, you wouldn't be based in Perth, but you, you would live in Perth and your, your location of your job would be at a mine site. And that would uh, vary depending on which mine site that you work in. Um, that doesn't allow much flexibility, but for Perth-based engineering roles, such as a project en engineer, a lot of these organizations have um, introduced working from home scenarios, so work, uh, remote working, um, flexible arrangements on projects, um, because the procurement and, su and supply chain um, to get parts for EPC and EPCM contractors has been delayed due to this pandemic. Um, they've been a lot more flexible with cost, um, with salaries, um, with how flexible you can be in the workplace too. Um, so not only is every other industry offering uh, soft motivators, it's definitely within the engineering industry itself. And it's sort of adapting to where the, a typical engineer does a 40 hour work week um, on the site or in the office. It, it really is changing now. And we are having candidates that are requesting um, these sort of flexible working arrangements with big organizations that we work with. So tier one or mining organizations and operators, and they are very much willing to open up to those conversations with for the right candidates. So uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, these future engineering careers uh, are not going to be what they used to be in the past. So engineering is definitely adapting with the rest of the world and um, you, you would be following the same trend as any other industry um, in regards to that. Um, Seek is a, a platform that we use within Australia to advertise um, jobs, essentially. It's one of the, the biggest uh, job platform advertisement uh, we have. And the data that uh, I've showed on that screen there shows around about the 2020 mark, the amount of advertisements um, or applications that uh, came through dipped down. But after 2020, you can see how um, the application, so the blue line there, um, actually dropped as well. So essentially, it's not really clear. Um, uh, that's just showing so the engineering job since 2020, how much that has increased. And that's due to uh, a lot of funding and a lot of uh, project increasement as well. That also comes with um, a heightened uh, advertising uh, in terms of a seek advertising and a, a record low a candidate application rate. Um, and that would be the reasons for those soft motivators to um, attract those engineering talents uh, to your organization or their organization. Um, sorry, how long is this presentation? I won't be much longer, I promise. <laughs> um, current data suggests that various engineering disciplines uh, can expect growth over the coming, coming years. Um, opportunities within engineering disciplines are big, um, diverse growth, such as industries, such as automation. Um, Jazreel just mentioned earlier that um, EIT offer a, a course in that as well, and it's a, a very much an upcoming um, specialization for you to focus on, or if you're interested in those sort of instrumentation control systems, PLC slash SCADA implementation. It's a really exciting um, sort of area to get into. Robotics is another one. So if you're into your mechatronics and electronic work, uh, I'd really recommend you to start um, doing your soft sort of skills um, over the years while you're studying. Um, mining engineering is a subdiscipline with the strongest predicted growth in Western Australia, the center of the, uh, the country's mining economy. So like I said um, earlier, Western Australia is very much a a resource driven economy and a lot of the engineering jobs would be around the support of that mining um, infrastructure. Um, however, the utility sector, uh, the oil and gas and the infrastructure um, sector are huge employers um, on 
our side uh, from Michael Page point of view. So we have clients um, such as Clough, uh, the construction industries, Oricon, um, and tier one um, organizations like that, that we recruit various roles for in a project space and mechanical space as well. So it's not only the mining industry that you uh, could dip your toes into if you chose to come to Australia. Okay, uh, continuing on with what the, the engineering career looks like within the future, companies are currently hiring at a graduate level now more than ever. Um, so if that doesn't tell you that it's a pretty good time to maybe start thinking about getting your qualification in the Australian engineering industry, this would be a pretty good time. Um, so there's been a 13% increase over the 12 months. Um, what that means is those soft motivators and uh, the allocation and the, the need for uh, employers and clients to attract the best possible talent, they've realized that they need to um, commit a lot of resources and um, to training and development to slightly younger engineers. And that's what really excites me. Um, I feel uh, in the past it's been more difficult to place uh, graduate engineers um, into entry level roles, um, but because they're without uh, as much training as they used to have, but because they've invested in so much training and specialization work, um, the opportunities are there. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see my, my mouse, but uh, mechanical engineering there, uh, 6,375 more professionals uh, in that space. Um, has been huge. So specialists in maintenance and reliability is increasing. And that's a personal observation of, of mine. And the electrical uh, engineering core market roles that I'm working for in the moment, I would say in the last six months, have been very much maintenance and reliability type roles. And uh, I believe that's because uh, the mine sites have already been developed. So there's very little feed projects or um, commissioning work um, and most of that would be EPC or EPCM clients, um, you know, uh, focusing on the electrical assets or mechanical assets and making sure that maintenance and reliability is on a constant improvement basis. Um, so that's a huge space if you're a mechanical and electrical engineer um, thinking about moving into the mining industry. Um, I would have a close look into maintenance and reliability. Um, right, so the one that has um, stuck out to us the most is uh, Fortescue Future Industries. We feel that they have developed their, uh, their strategies and goals and what they want to achieve from uh, Fortescue's metal group. Um, so FMG and it made a subsidiary called FFI or Fortescue Future Industries. What they've decided to do is to get into um, hydrogen, so electrifying uh, H2O from natural water tables and electrifying those with massive electrifiers um, in a natural environment to create hydrogen. Um, they haven't quite been able to pull it off just yet, but what an exciting space. I mean, going from a, a essentially an iron ore processor into a hydrogen producer that you could use in your stove uh, tops uh, and things like that as a household energy asset. Um, now, what's exciting about that is nobody really knows um, exactly what they're doing. It's not a hard science yet, so there's a lot of problem solving, and uh, they would be the first to uh, admit that. But um, if you're looking to get into a pioneer in a renewable space, um, it's a, such a good time uh, to get into it. Um, so environmental, social, governance roles are becoming increasing importance to, um, as we know, uh, being a, a lot more less carbon um, well, more carbon efficient, excuse me, is very important uh, for companies' triple bottom line and harnessing renewable energy. Um, as an engineer with the skill set becoming increasing uh, in demand in the future industry. So um, I see it even if you're a mechanical engineer, but you have some skills in the renewable space, you have a really great advantage to an organization that's uh, strategy is really to uh, become less. Um, emissions, I guess, or uh, pollutant in the, in the world. I know that's not the right uh, terminology, but uh, yeah, producing less emissions um, would be a focus of most um, engineering uh, and operators at the moment. 
Um, now, if you want to do that, um, be, I recommend becoming an expert in your field of choice, whatever that may be. Um, how do you find that out? What I recommend is don't um, try multiple disciplines um, at the same, well, not at the same time, but within a short amount of time. Um, while you're studying, I would uh, be as curious and passionate as you possibly can be to find out where you want to specialize in. Um, you would be have a broad idea, whether you've enrolled in electrical engineering or mechanical or projects, uh, sorry, not project or automation systems. So you do have a, a slight idea, but what industry um, does that look like? Um, is that utilities? Is it mining? Is it oil and gas? Is it construction? Um, I would be asking yourself those sort of questions. Where do I want to end up and how can I get there um, towards the end of my studies? Um, Jazreel, uh, are you able to just give me a nudge if I'm going over time? I, I do apologize. I do uh, think I'm talking a little bit too much, but these are really important. <laughs> to get your perfect job in this, these future um, engineering jobs, don't be the one, the last one across the line. So I, I always recommend being as proactive as you can while you're studying. Uh, get your name out there, get your personal brand out there and let people know uh, not that you're ambitious, but let them know that your, your goals are what they are. So your specialization, your qualification, and what sort of industry um, you want to work in. Those are, those are sort of statements that um, a lot of engineers and a lot of recruiters and professionals can, can help you if you know those sort of questions and uh, provide opportunities for you. Um, so while you're studying, what things can you do to prepare yourselves uh, to get the best opportunities? Prepare your CV, um, even if it's not engineering related. Um, as I said, I'm not an engineer, so my CV would look very, very different to how yours would look um, by the time you graduated. Um, but even if it's customer service type roles or retail type roles, such as McDonald's, Mac Cafe, um, that's relevant. That's a transferable skill that we could promote to a client, um, particularly if you're wanting to work um, in a client facing type role. Um, for argument's sake, let's say uh, maintenance, reliability, BHP, again, um, I would include there that um, this candidate has worked in a retail space before and therefore proven themselves um, able to, uh, you know, speak to a client and uh, have a good, reasonably good customer service experience. Uh, that's huge for an engineer. Um, if you're speaking to engineering clients, one of their biggest problems with um, graduates or entry level engineers is communication. So if you don't feel that something um, is not helping you on your CV, if it's not relevant to engineering, um, have a chat to a recruiter because we, we look at things slightly different and how we can promote a transferable skill such as working at uh, McDonald's. Um, asking for help is one of the best things you can do. Finding a mentor that's already working um, within the industry that you are aiming to get to um, is, is an excellent way and asking them how you can get there and getting some tips on that would be a great way to go about it. Uh, reflect on your achievements. Um, now, when I say reflect on your achievements, uh, I would uh, write them down uh, because those are going to be super handy when it comes to time to doing your CV. And it's extremely easy to forget what sort of achievements you've achieved while you're studying. Um, those could be project awards, those could be getting the top grade in a certain subject. Um, write them down and remember them um, because when we get to the CV part, you'll see when I break it down how important that can be. Um, being active in your community, networking. So if you're already doing the right thing by being here and having a listening uh, to us, all 106 of you. Um, welcome, by the way, uh, and if you tuned in uh, or just joined in, um, hello. Um, but yeah, being active in your community, um, linking up with me on LinkedIn, um, asking questions about people who are working in the industry uh, are always good things because um, in my experience, people want to help you if you know exactly what you want to do and are just asking for a bit of assistance to get there. Um, especially if you're active in your community already, but do not expect to not be active and then go ask for help. Uh, that, it doesn't work that way. You, you would have, it's a, 
um, a give and take type in system. Uh, so if you're active within your community and you're helping other students, um, other young engineers, um, they will, that gets reciprocated quite well. Um, work smarter, not harder. Um, now, what that means is um, do your applications um, through SEEK and your graduate applications and things like that. Um, but also speak to a recruiter or um, a different recruiter, sorry, not a different recruiter, but if it's a mechanical engineer, um, have a chat to them, ask for their advice, um, ask them if they're able to put your CV out there to their clients and their, their network to see if there's any opportunities there. That can be a really smart way of, of doing things. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, the recruiter knows what you want. Um, and that's a worldwide sort of um, piece of advice that I can uh, get to you. You never know by asking that question. Um, also do your research. One of the, the, my favorite questions to ask a candidate if I'm trying to set parameters around the search for their next role is uh, what organizations would you like to work for? Now, if a candidate has those answers ready, in mind, I know that they've thought about those sort of things. Uh, what specialization, what industry um, they want to work in. And if they've done those, they can name those organizations. Uh, for example, if you want to get into uh, hydrogen or in renewable energies, uh, Fortescue Future Industries is always going to be up there. Uh, Woodside would be up there with their hydrogen projects as well and various solar power um, contractors and, and um, yeah, um, clients would be uh, looking for those skills as well. So do your research um, and be confident with who you want to work for and uh, be confident with why you want to work for them. That's a, an extremely important one. Um, if we're as a recruiter able to tell that client why you want to work for them, it makes everybody's job a lot easier and it articulates to the client why you would be the right candidate to work for them too. Um, finally, CV tips. Um, now, like I mentioned earlier, because you would be in the engineering industry, it would be slightly different to how a mine would look uh, for a recruitment role or consultancy type role. But this is generally the way that we format um, our candidate CVs before we send them to our clients. So it includes your name. Now that would be decided whether it's your first name and last name, uh, whether you're already in a role and you're not quite I'm sure whether you want to be known as being active in the market or um, hindering your chances at, in your current role. Your education slash qualifications, so that would be your Bachelor of Engineering or Masters of Engineering degree. Your right, right to work status. Now that's very important from an international student point of view. Um, that would be put there full working rights once you've graduated because that's what it is. Uh, you have full working rights, you can work full time, um, for three years. Um, so uh, I wouldn't worry about that. That's not an immigration thing. That's just to assure the client that you are eligible to work 40 hours per week um, and nothing's going to hinder you from doing that. Um, notice period would be if you're already in a role. Um, typically that would be four weeks if you're in a permanent um, situation. A professional summary. Um, now these would include um, your achievements, uh, what your predominant market is, what your specializations are, and how long you've been doing it for. Um, if you wanted to include why you would be a, a really good candidate um, to uh, consider for this role as well. So a small cover lid, I guess, uh, but a professional summary of yourself and who you are and what you specialize in and how long you've been doing it for. Um, a strong one like that, it goes a long way. Now experience. Um, Experience shouldn't just be your uh, job title and uh, the job description underneath, so what you did during the job. Um, can uh, clients and recruiters themselves really like to look at things like you know, what responsibilities did you have and what achievements uh, did you achieve while you were within that role? Um, that is very sellable. Um, and that goes back to where I say, please write down your achievements. No matter how small you think they are, you can always look at it, back at them for either motivation, um, but also, um, you know, you've already got them there to put into your experience, um, whether that's engineering related or not. If it's not, then it's a transferable skill. Um, if it's experience, then we really want to uh, focus on those responsibilities and achievements, no matter how small you think those are. Uh, if you've taken on any professional development, um, so things like joining the EA, um, 
uh, network and community, getting involved in micro credentials, networking, um, all of those things, finding a mentor, um, jot them down. Technology skills. So if you've got any skills that are very much in particular, um, so for an electrical engineer, AutoCAD, um, ETAP, uh, those sort of things would be uh, very, very important. Software applications, very similar to technology skills. However, we're talking more engineering software now. So as SCADA slash HMI software applications. So um, Schneider, Ellen Bradley, Siemens, um, those sort of specific softwares that we can actually communicate to the client that you are um, proficient in um, goes a long way. Right, um, now one last thing is a LinkedIn tip uh, for you. Uh, believe it or not, uh, well, I'm sure you do believe it now, LinkedIn is, is a huge resource for both clients and recruiters themselves to keep track of uh, what talent is out there in the market. Um, so the tips that, and it, the more updated your LinkedIn profile is, the more chance uh, we have of finding you, whether that's a client or a, um, or a recruiter ourselves working for a client to, to source a role. The best things that you could do is uh, keep up your activity. And uh, that is just, you know, simply logging on every now and then, uh, liking whatever you like, whatever you're interested in. What I recommend is, um, you know, being as active with that specialization, that industry and follow pages um, that you have decided as well. Um, so we do look at activity and how often you are in on your LinkedIn profile and whether you know, you, you're serious about it. Um, we look at your LinkedIn profile just as important, well, I'd say just less important than your LinkedIn profile, but both recruiters and the clients themselves will be looking at your LinkedIn profile. Um, if you can get recommendations from your past lecturers, friends, uh, other engineers, goes a long way. Um, your skills, um, you can get those endorsed by um, your um, your peers as well. I uh, highly recommend doing that. If you've had any publications, your licenses and certifications, your ed education and your experience. So I see this as your, your live CV um, where anybody can go look at it straight away. I know there is um, slightly different uh, subsections to it, but a lot of those would be very, very similar. Um, so skills, licenses and certifications, education, Feel free to put in there your software and technology skills as well. Um, you could put that under licenses and certifications. But um, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, um, I recommend starting one uh, as soon as possible um, and filling in as much data as you can because the more information we have about you, the better we, we can move on. Now, I was going to move on uh, to a good news story, Jazreel. Do I have uh, five more minutes? Yep, yep, sure, of course. Yep, go ahead. Sorry, Sorry Kim, uh, I didn't realize uh, my practice run, it was a lot shorter than this. <laughs> um, but it, it, essentially, um, that's a blank slide. So I just kind of wanted, um, yeah, if, if you're still looking at my slide, maybe click on uh, me instead. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you a, a good news story about a, a, a Kenyan student that had uh, come over here and done his master's degree. Now, uh, he did not find this easy um, in regards, and I don't think any international student does, uh, finding it easy coming to Australia, starting a new degree. But he did all of those things that I outlined to you. And uh, that's pretty much where I took uh, these tips from. It was just following how this Kenyan international student um, portrayed himself when he arrived in Australia, what opportunities he looked for, what mentors he found. And it, particularly, he wanted to do the, the specialization as well. Now, um, it was a much longer story, but essentially he got placed, um, I think it was two or three weeks ago. Um, he was on $85,000, which is a pretty good entry level um, engineering job. Um, and the new job that he has just got after five months um, of working in his previous job, he's now on 115 thousand dollars working in a drill and blasting space um, in the mining industry so that it sort of gives you a little bit of an idea of the opportunities that are out there 
but there are some things that you're going to have to do while you're studying some extracurricular and above and beyond type activities to create those opportunities for you. Um, and those are the small tips that I can, I, I can give you from there. Um, that's it. Uh, um, I just really wanted to make sure that I keep you motivated. If you weren't sure about studying engineering, um, if you can take it from me that this is a, a one that you should continue doing because A, we need candidates. It's a candidate short market um, and our clients are looking for you. Um, so if you can commit to um, the studies and get your professional qualifications out the way, uh, there's a lot of opportunities and uh, if you're money orientated it's a very um, well, it's a higher paying role uh, th um, than average in Australia as well as an engineer too so you'll be rewarded quite nicely and um, that's it Jezreel if that's okay Thank you, Tim. I'm going to take over from you now. I think I am next. Yes, I am. Um, first of all, before I, I, I start, I did want to just say that, Tim, a few times you called them small tips. They were huge tips. And I hope that everyone actually pays attention because um, your, your tips for success are certainly important um, and, and certain valuable lessons. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Right, so my name is Kim Spann. I'm from Engineers Australia. I'm not going to be talking. I've got notes and notes of things that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I'm not going to talk to you about very much of that at all. What I'm going to do instead is just run through my slides and pick out the points that I think are important based on some of the questions that I've seen being asked. Before I start, I would, however, like to do something that we do here in Australia. Um, it's called an acknowledgement of country. And what we do is every time we do a presentation, we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the First Nations people. So in my case, sitting here in Perth, it is the Wajak Noongar people who are the custodians of the land. And I say my, I pay my respects to them and I acknowledge them and respect them and their elders past and present. Right. Okay, so this is who we are. So in a, in a nutshell, Engineers Australia is the peak body for engineering in this country. We are a professional association and we are by far the largest engineering association within the engineering profession with over 115,000 members. Um, we are home for all engineers, no matter what discipline, um, starting right at the student stage through to, we have an, um, a retired engineers group. So we are pretty much an engineer's home for life. We have nine different colleges, which cover all areas of practice in engineering. And the, co the colleges set professional standards and provide continuing professional development opportunities for our members. We also have 30 technical societies, and these provide the opportunity for members to further their technical knowledge gain CPD hours um, and, and you know, take part in an extensive range of educational seminars, workshops, technical publications, um, there's news, all sorts of things that are relevant to specific areas of practice. We also have four special interest groups um, that represent key focus areas for our members. Um, one of those, um, the only one that I'm going to mention is Young Engineers Australia, which is a group of um, young engineers, um, that's engineers under the age of 35, but it's not necessarily an age thing. It could be young in engineering careers and there's a whole lot of um, activities and events that Young Engineers Australia holds for our members. We also are the only association to accredit um, engineering degrees and diplomas. So the, the benefit of that is that when um, you are studying an accredited degree, it means you are benchmarked. You have met that specific level, that certain um, level that is required by industry. 
We also, as I mentioned, cover all disciplines of engineering and we are your seat at the table. And that means we are the voice of engineers, we are the voice of the engineering industry. When any government decisions um, or legislation is made around engineering, we sit at the table and advise and inform policy. Before I move on from the slide, I did want to, just based on um, the, the questions that have been coming up, I wanted to mention the Washington, Dublin and Sydney Accords. So there are three accords. Now I see a lot of you have studied engineering previously all around the world. If your qualification is recognized under one of those accords, either the Washington, Dublin or Sydney Accords, that means you are recognized. There are mutual recognition agreements and you are recognized by Engineers Australia. Um, the same way that Engineers Australia is the signatory to those accords and our qualifications that are accredited are recognized around the world. So if you'd like to um, just make a note of that and go and do some research and find out whether your qualification is recognized under one of those accords. Um, I also wanted to let you know about assessments. So um, Engineers Australia has two different types of uh, qualification assessments where you can have your qualification assessed by a panel of engineering assessors. Um, we have the stage one competen competency assessments um, that will assess your qualification and let you know at what level that qualification is recognized here in Australia. We also have something called the MSA or Migration Skills Assessment and that goes into slightly more details similar to the Stage 1 Competency Assessment but it is recognized by the Immigration Department and does count towards um, visa requirements. Um, and all that information is found on our website. So please go and have a look at the Engineers Australia website or you can reach out to me and I'm happy to share that with you. Right, moving on. We also hold a lot of events throughout the year for our members. I'm not going to go through all of them, but there are thousands of technical events. There are so many conferences and, and other on-campus events. Um, I, hop, I pop into EIT regularly and do some um, PD with the student members there. We also have a whole, we are all over social media, so we understand how busy lives are today and that a lot of um, students are online. So we are pretty much wherever you are, we are there. So you can get your news and your, you know, what's happening in industry in real time. Now, the one thing that I did want to mention here is we in, in, um, in all the different states around Australia, we actually have a private Facebook group for our members and they are state specific. So here in WA, I've got 1,800 plus WA student members in this Facebook group and in there I share all sorts of information that is relevant to our student members such as internship opportunities, graduate roles, um, what else? Anything, any information, the events that are coming up, um, articles that are of interest. So that's the one thing. And I've got LinkedIn there too. As Tim said, you should be on LinkedIn. It is how we connect. It is where a lot of networking happens. So if you don't have your profile, um, set one up. That's just a snapshot of where we are around the country. So that's the map of Australia and we are all over. And not only are we all over Australia, but we have international chapters too. So um, you can have you know have a look there, and you can see we're we're pretty much all over the world. Um, right, I want you to just talk very briefly about how Engineers Australia membership helps you. We've got a lot of resources for our members. Um, we have something called EA on Demand, where we have hundreds, probably thousands, of recorded presentations, webinars, keynotes from conferences, and they are available to our members. Some of them there is a fee to watch, but others are, you know, the majority of them are free. And so we always recommend that, you know, when you have some spare time to hop on there and, and you know, keep your um, continuing professional development up to date. We also have 
all of those other resources. Now, I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but I did want to mention the first one, networking events. Networking is something I'm passionate about. It's something I do with students all the time. I love putting industry and students in the same room and seeing how those connections happen and the amazing opportunities that occur. So um, that's one of the things that, that we do do for our student members. We have a whole lot of other things there, as you can see. Um, I'm going to detail some of them now. One of those is our jobs board. Again, it's specific. It's a member benefit for our student members. Um, and that is, um, it, it's, it, sorry, companies around Australia advertise and promote internships, work experience, VAC programs, grad roles, early career roles. And so you can go on there and have a look. We also have virtual work experiences. We have a whole lot of new ones coming up. But, but they're eight at the moment. So um, these are these were developed um, and launched during the COVID period when it was far more difficult to get in in the workplace, you know, in-person work experiences. So we developed these and these have been extremely popular. Um, and and we, some of the feedback we've received is, is that it's helped um, students, you know, confirm that that specific discipline is where they want to be. So. Um, that's something to look at for, specifically for our members, as is the internships hub. Now, internships are huge. It's, it's such a great way to get a taste of what your career could look like. So we have recently launched an internships hub. And in that internships hub, we have a whole lot of information, some of it only for members. But those of you who aren't members um, can still go on there and have a look. There are um, there's information on how to prepare for internships, how to get the most out of internships while you're undertaking them. There's case studies, videos of students who have you know, completed internships talking about what they did and how they did it. Companies talking about how valuable their interns were to them. So that's worth having a look at. Finally, student membership for with Engineers Australia is free. So we don't charge our students to be members. As long as you are studying an accredited qualification, um, an EA accredited qualification, you can become a student member. Um, whether you're studying offshore or onshore, um, you are welcome to, to, to be part of the Engineers Australia family. So I think that is probably all I have for you today. Um, but again, I'd be very happy to, to answer any questions in the chat. Thank you. All right. Um, thanks, Kim and Tim. That was really insightful. I certainly wish I had that, you know, while I was um, along my academic journey, knowing about all these, um, you know, networking opportunities and beyond that I have does really make me want to try studying engineering myself. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, so we definitely have um, that time for the Q&A session as promised. But yeah, I just want to cover a bit uh, about more, not so much to, you know, expand too much about, you know, who we are as EIT, um, but more so, you know, tying back to what Kim and um, Tim has uh, have expanded on and I guess just show um, and mention to you guys briefly, you know, what we we, we offer here at EIT that might be of interest to, you know, this um, academic journey that um, you are or a career pathway that you might be wanting to pursue. Um, and also I've seen a lot of um, our course um, specific related questions in the chat. So I will try to um, incorporate some of them as well um, as I um, as I speak about it. So yeah, um, with regards to um, the courses, um, I um, in particular wanted to mention our on-campus um, programs. So um, our on-campus on qualifications that we do offer currently are bachelor's, master's, and um, a doctorate of engineering program. And um, our next intakes for all of them are starting next year, 20th of February, 2023. So I did get um, a couple of questions there saying, um, um, you know, what are the um, requirements for a master's, for example, um, they, um, the thing to note is um, obviously it's split into online and on campus. So things like um, the requirements, um, they might vary depending on that. Um, it's best that you know you check on our EIT website for that. Um, but the, um, the 
the most basic requirement I would say um, is you know to hold um, some sort of um, qualification that's in the congruent field and um, it is um, very crucial that you check on the specific course that you're interested on on our EIT website for what that congruent field um, actually is. Um, so yeah, just I guess not to miscommunicate anything, um, the full um, entry requirements are there on um, our course pages. So please head over there um, to have a, um, a look. Yeah, and I guess um, important thing to note um, as well is that all these on-campus courses are recognized and accredited by the Australian government. However, uh, only a, a number of um, these courses are um, Engineers Australia accredited. Um, good news is that there are a handful of them here at EIT. So um, all of our on-campus bachelors are fully recognized under Engineers Australia, specifically through the Sydney Accord, um, which um, Kim mentioned briefly um, previously. So. Um, these are the Bachelor of Science in Electrical, Industrial Automation, Mechanical and Civil and Structural Engineering. These courses are three years and, and it's a full-time load. So, um, and they are only available to study on our Perth campuses. We do also have um, two on-campus masters with the full EA accreditation through um, the Washington um, Accord specifically. These are the Masters of Engineering in Industrial Automation as well as the Masters of Engineering in Electrical Systems. Um, these are 24 months courses um, and they are available both on our Perth and Melbourne campuses. Um, do just note that um, the Masters in Electrical Systems is only recognized if you enrolled um, to study on our Perth campus. Um, and once again, if you know, you're interested to know more about um, the accreditation, how it works, um, you can always visit um, our accreditation page. I'll just quickly post that in the chat box as well. Um, one question that we do get asked quite a lot is, um, one question that we do get asked a lot is, you know, um, is this um, course specifically accredited? Is it not? So, um, and, as, and as well, whether that year accreditation is, um, what, what is that equivalent in um, the, um, the country that a student is enrolling from? So again, that um, resource that I've just linked in the chat, chat box is really helpful um, for you to, um, you know, find out um, what the equivalent is. Right, um, what else? So yes, um, I just want to talk a bit about um, our Perth and Melbourne campuses as well. As you know, we had a lot of questions just now, um, you know, what um, um, with regards to, I guess, post-study work opportunities, as mentioned, Perth is, um, has regional status, so that is really crucial for international students, for example, if they so choose to, you know, continue um, working and living in Australia, um, even after they have graduated, say, with EIT. Um, as mentioned, um, a, a number of um, our courses are available to study on both Perth and um, our Melbourne campuses, um, obviously depending on uh, the availability by course. We, uh, with our Perth campus, it's at Bentley and our Melbourne campus um, at um, the center of the Melbourne um, city. So both of them are really in close proximity to public transport facilities and a lot more. Um, and I guess either campus you, you know, you eventually choose to study at, you will have access to um, a huge range of resources such as our remote labs, um, our live webinars, um, and also a really, really great team of um, student support services. Um, then we also do have um, the internships that I want to briefly touch on. So one major benefit really of being an on-campus student at EIT is having that opportunity to actually undertake um, a work integrated learning or um, internship specifically if you are enrolled in any of our bachelor's or master's program um, because it is um, a prerequisite um, as part of completing um, one of these um, qualifications. You will you know, definitely benefit from that practical experience, being exposed to um, the industry, um, networking opportunities, so on and so forth. Um, and 
very important, uh, most importantly, um, as part of it, you, um, there will be a lot of guidance um, provided when it comes to resume writing, interviewing, and, um, you know, just making um, contact with um, a lot of the industry um, partners out there. Um, so I guess really helpful in this context, you know, as we're talking about, um, you know, we had a lot of questions like, you know, I'm already in, the, in this industry, I'm already studying, how can I really, you know, um, I guess build on that experience or that academic knowledge. So I guess this is really, you know, the space um, for that. Um, and I wanted to just touch on our scholarships as well. So um, we do, um, I've seen as well in the chat, a lot of people asking um, about, um, you know, whether we have loans that we offer here at EIT. Yes, we do have um, a number of loans. Like I mentioned, there's the VAT loan, there's fee help. Unfortunately, um, at the moment, um, one of the um, the base criteria, I would say, is actually having um, an Australian citizenship. I know that's obviously not the case for a lot of international students. So unfortunately, and it's also subject to a lot of other eligibility criteria. So um, one other option that um, we can suggest is um, to try for one of the scholarships. Again, they are also um, suggest, um, subjected, um, subject to um, a number of eligibility criteria, but um, um, we do actually offer, um, it's really a good option because it does, you know, relieve some of that burden, let's say, um, um, relieve some of that burden um, on your tuition fee. If you know that's something you know, you're looking for, I know I saw in the chat a, a lot of people mentioned it's not um, a good long-term solution for them, um, given, I guess, the length of duration that you want to study, let's say if you're taking um, a master's that you know, might be a little bit longer. So yeah, that is definitely an option that you might want to consider. Um, just a note that they are all partial scholarships. So that means, you know, you're not going to get, um, I guess, a full a reduction of your tuition fee, but rather, you know, just a small um, percentage, sorry. So with our future student scholarships, they do range from um, a 25% reduction of the overall tuition fees. Um, and then with our current student scholarships, they do range from um, a 25% reduction in um, the following semester fees. So yeah, um, just thought maybe I would post that in the chat as well, if I can get around finding that link. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's there on the screen if you're ever interested um, Yeah, in the scholarships, right? Yeah, um, I also did want to highlight a little bit about um, the resources that we have um, out there for future on-campus students. You know, um, we definitely want to ensure that students have access to the right resources if they are looking um, to enroll on campus, but obviously also um, online. But as you can imagine, the process with on-campus does involve a lot of um, documentation um, with the application process and um, you know, being an offshore student, it is um, relatively hard to get all of that document um, all together. That's why, um, I guess, our team over here at EIT, we have put together some really handy um, resources across our website. So um, we do have a page that's dedicated to everything you might need to know about studying or studying on campus, um, such as the fees involved and that's um, including tuition fees or even things like the fees associated um, to live and stay in Australia, which sometimes you know can be a little bit confusing for um, say international students and um, some information that might be um, quite crucial to international students as well. Um, I'll just quickly post that in chat if it is of your interest. And then we recently also did put together um, a really quick um, on-campus application guide. So there we've basically outlined um, the application steps and on-campus student will have to go through because, you know, there's an option 
um, for EIT students to actually go through um, a direct application or use one of the EIT um, education agents. So we you know, try to provide um, as much information around the documents you need for a successful application. As mentioned, it is quite a bit of a process and especially if um, you know, you're offshore. So things like the OSHC or um, some crucial questions around um, course, for example, it's all being covered on that guide there. So um, yeah, we also have a little handy flowchart um, that really does break down that um, process, application process and steps for you. But yeah, so I guess hopefully all of that resource um, will make that process um, a little bit clearer for you, you know, if you're ever interested in um, enrolling in an on-campus course with us. Right. Yep, at this point, um, yeah, I just want to ask if anyone has, I guess, any questions um, specific to, you know, an on-campus course or any one of our courses um, in particular that I guess I didn't get to. Maybe before, you know, we move on and let Kim and Tim answer any questions. Right, I don't see any questions in the chat. Right, I see Sam has just asked a question there. What is the cost of the fast track EA skills assessment? Sam, I'm, I'd ask you to contact our member services team or our customer engagement team, and they've just changed their name. Um, I've left their details in the chat. The email address, it's memberservices at engineersaustralia.org.au. Reach out to them. They have all that information. They answer questions like that every single day. So they will have the cost at their fingertips. And they will also be able to share any information about um, you know, people who've studied previously who want to um, do one of the assessments, um, even if it's not the fast track one, any of the other assessments or any of the membership um, pathways to EA. Kelvin, um, Kelvin, if you are um, studying an accredited qualification, any accredited qualification is welcome to be a student member of Engineers Australia. So, yep, if you you are, um, I'm going to pop in the. Oh, um, golly, there's so many coming in. Okay, so Robin, there is. I've put in the link to the latest MSA. It's on our website, um, but it is in the chat as well. I did share that. Um, Sam, I will type in the email uh, email address now for our um, customer engagement team. I will I will pop, pop that in again. All right, yeah, just because I'm a bit conscious of time, maybe we'll just, you know, skip right through, I guess, to the Q&A. We've already answered some questions, but I did catch on um, on a couple of them. Um, yeah, Kim and Tim, feel free to answer them. But um, just a few that I've got um, with regards, I think someone asked about the immigrant um, as well as work permits. Again, um, as we mentioned at the very start, um, I'm not able to, or any of us um, will not be able to comment fully on um, you know, things like migration, the migration side of things. But um, as mentioned, the best sites would be um, departments of home um, of home affair as well as EME. Um, as mentioned previously I we do also have that little on-campus application guide we have, which I've linked in a chat box um, and there you will see that I've actually uh, we have actually linked a couple of those um, um, Department of Home Affairs resources uh, more specifically pertaining to things like visas um, and what um, document documents that visa actually um, entails so you know 
there you will find your answers with regards to things like you know what's the eligibility criteria and I know a lot of students looking um, I guess for post-study work opportunities for example they are quite interested in stuff like you know how long can I stay with this particular visa or with this particular work um, and what um, I guess work rights or time commitment, um, working hours, does this particular visa uh, grant me? So that is um, your best place um, um, to look at those resources. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers the question around visas. Um, do I get exemptions if I enroll? Yeah, sorry, there's a lot of questions coming in. Um, Kim, I think there's a question. Um, I have done a bachelor's of honours in civil. Is master's available in Australia? Uh, is a master's in civil available in Australia? Absolutely. Um, sorry, did I miss the... There are lots of institutions in Australia that offer masters in civil. Yep, I'm not sure if the question was yeah. specific to EA or not. Okay, but, yeah. so EA, yeah, EA doesn't um, doesn't teach any courses. We support, we accredit institutions that teach courses. Um, so yeah, and I've actually shared our program accreditation um, uh, program accreditation document and um, the link is there to the PDF and you can see all EIT's courses that are accredited there. Um, if you don't mind, um, I, I didn't emphasize this earlier but um, EA accreditation is one of the first questions that we'll ask um, as a recruiter uh, whether that qualification is recognized by Engineers Australia and, and that is driven by our clients um, and the industry itself as well so um, if in the back of your mind you may be thinking that um, you know we could scrape through without an accredited engineering degree and just rely on experience and things like that experience is priceless however the uh, recognition from Engineers Australia is extremely important from our side of, of, yeah um, the other thing, sorry to interrupt as well, is um, somebody asked about salary um, averages. Uh, I've included a link in the chat there to a salary trends report that Michael Page has generated. That will give you a really good idea of what the salaries are looking like in all different industries in Australia. You can scroll down and find uh, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, uh, and break it down by industry. So that's a really handy tool for you to get. Um, also, the Michael Page um, website has a whole lot of tips and tricks on remote working, interview skills, how to set your CV up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, yeah, and that, that's all I wanted to emphasize. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, good. I think this might have been covered, Kim, but I guess a lot of people ask, uh, ask you asking, I guess, you know, um, what's really involved in actually getting um, becoming um, 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 I guess joining the EA um, membership maybe great if you want to. okay yes of course so to become an EA student member all you need to do is first of all you need to be studying um, an, an accredited qualification so if you are studying through EIT you can become an EA member unfortunately if you're studying around you know elsewhere around the world um, unless you are um, under the studying under the uh, a course that is recognized under the Washington or one of the accords Washington Dublin or Sydney accords um, you you know you won't be able to become a member. But if you're starting through EA, you are welcome to sign up for free student membership. And you do that through our website, the Engineers Australia website. There is a, a membership tab and you just click on that, choose student member um, and yep, absolutely. And um, so for, for that person who is studying at the Atlantic International University, unfortunately, you probably wouldn't be able to become a free EA student member um because it is only for accredited courses that doesn't mean however that you couldn't become a member but you would have to have your qualifications assessed 
I hope that answers all the questions about membership. Yeah, um, Tim, this might be for you, but I did see a number of questions, but I think it all points um, kind of to the same question that is, um, I guess, looks like a lot of peop um, people are interested, you know, what, um, let's say I'm already studying in a, a, a particular field of engineering or I'm already in a particular industry, um, what, what can, how can I progress from there in terms of, um, I guess, um, you know, career progression and, 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 and where they can go from there. I know you, you mentioned obviously things like networking, LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, maybe yeah, want yeah. To that's a different um, stage of your career. I guess once you've uh, got found that foot in the door in that organization that you're looking for, how do, how do you move up from there? So for example, I get the question, um, so you're an electrical engineer and you would like to make it to a lead or a principal electrical en engineer with responsibilities. The, the most successful candidates that I've seen do this, um, their communication skills has been, have been brilliant. They're extremely honest individuals um, and willing um, to work on any sort of problems. Um, so, uh, but the most important thing is the ability to communicate and mentor uh, younger engineers. Um, it's an industry that's renowned for not being able to articulate or train. Um, so individuals are excellent but the communication and training um, passed down organizations has been a difficult challenge. Um, and that's not only engineering, I'm sure it's a whole lot of industries and companies as well. However, the ones that have um, become extremely successful and I've watched them become successful, they want to see others uh, grow within their team and within their projects. So it's not only an intrinsic way of thinking uh, about your professional development, it's about wanting to help others with their projects getting involved uh, with as much as possible and mentoring someone. Um, you, you do not have to be older than somebody to be a mentor. You just have to know a little bit more and provide some advice. Um, uh, that being said, your mentor could be a lot more senior than you. Um, but yeah, networking, getting involved, micro credentials as well. They teach you, um, you know, skills while you're in a job, if you're looking to a sideways step in a different industry. For example, um, FMG have gone through this. They've taken a lot of their employees that are process engineers working on iron ore um, and moved them over into research and development positions with, um, you know, future uh, Fortescue future industries in the hydrogen space and renewable energy space. So, yeah, you're not closed off um, if you're an electrical engineer or a process engineer. I interviewed a candidate today who is a chemical engineer but working on uh, sustainability design um, in the construction space, so residential and commercial. Uh, so making sure that the emissions and the compliance standards of those buildings are being put through at an appropriate level, which was just phenomenal because you wouldn't really make that sort of connection between a process engineer and somebody working in that sort of space. So where, what I'm saying to you is don't be stuck in the discipline that um, you you are in. If you want to specialize, there are always micro-credentials. Uh, the, the good thing is you're already an engineer and you're qualified. So the specialization uh, part is just a bit of upskilling and asking a lot of questions would be my best um, piece of advice. Um, the other part and the other sort of avenue that engineers go is into project engineering. Now that's a fascinating um, space because Project engineers can be from all works of life and from all uh, disciplines of engineering. They could be mechanical, civil, electrical, um, but they overseeing the whole project space. So a lot of multidisciplinary knowledge is needed in regards to managing that whole project and the critical lines and what needs to be done and at what time. But um, yeah, a lot of um, electrical engineers in my space either move into senior electrical engineers or project engineers and renewable projects um, in the, uh, so renewable within a, a strong electrical discipline knowledge is needed there. Thanks, Tim. Just on that, um, yeah, I guess if it's of any of your interest, there is um, um, a few um, leadership and management courses offered by us here at EIT. There's currently an advanced diploma um, in leadership and manage management that we do offer and that's um, an 18 months course. It's really good because um, I guess the benefits it's focused around are more around a bit of that project management um, skills um, that Tim just mentioned. So 
yeah, and given that um, I guess the duration of the course, um, it's really um, meant to help I guess focus on on that more specialized area. Um, I'm a bit conscious of time, so we'll just get to the last few questions. I did see um, that Linus who asked, yeah, looks like the advanced diploma in electrical instrumentation engineering is not recognized by EA. Yes, um, as mentioned, we do all of our courses here at EIT except our professional certificates of competency are um, recognized and accredited by the Australian government, but only a selected number of courses are um, accredited um, under EA um, under um, through the specific um, um, international courts. So um, yeah, I have posted the link um, on the slides with regards to, you know, looking at which courses are um, accredited and recognized by Engineers Australia. So please go off that um, website um, to check um, your course of interest. All right, maybe just a last question. Um, Any scholarships available for masters in civil engineering in Australia and part-time work? Right. Yeah, we I we have had a, a number of questions around our scholarships. Yes, um, as as mentioned, we do offer a range of scholarships. Um, it's just um obviously subjected to um eligibility criteria. Um. And also there are a number of them um, available to, um, on campus. So if that's of your interest, um, if you're looking um, to do an on-campus course already, um, that is an avenue. Yep, so these scholarships are um, available um, for current and future students. Um, the, um, it's best that you check uh, on the website. Um, that I've posted in the chat, but yeah. Right, um, Tim and Kim, if you are comfortable, um, I'm not sure if you guys can share um, your contact, um, your contacts with, um, let's say your email, for example, with um, the attendees maybe, because there seems to be a lot of questions. So um, if you're not able to get to all of them, in this session, unfortunately, um, we will endeavor, you know, to reply if it's course related. Um, happy to please send them to um, our webinar contact. I will post that um, in the chat as well. Um, but Kim and Tim, if you're happy to share yours as well. Um, sure, yeah. I have done that. And there were a number of um, emails coming, I mean, messages coming of oh, questions coming through, sorry, about um, scholarships. And um, as you've already said, Jezreel, um, EIT does often sco offer scholarships. Engineers Australia doesn't offer scholarships, um, but EIT does. So have a look and see if you are eligible for those. Um, also, just one, one quick question. If you have completed um, an accredited course and you are no longer studying, you are then eligible for full membership with EA. But again, contact our member services team, our customer engagement team. I have shared their email address um, because you, you, know, you would then, you're not a student anymore. So then you wouldn't be eligible for your full student membership. All right. Thank you, Jezreel. Thanks so much for, for hosting today's session. Oh, good. No worries. I guess just as a quick wrap up as well, you know, we have so much interest around um, 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 questions about, you know, um, courses, your career pathway. We will cover um, some of that as well in um, our upcoming EIT virtual open day um, session that is um, hosted online. So there we will answer um, a lot of questions about, you know, um, EIT specific courses, but also there are a few technical sessions around um, some of the core disciplines of engineering that we do offer here. So um, hopefully we are able to, you know, cover some of um, those questions there as well. Um, and that event is on the Thursday of 20, um, 27 October 2022. So yeah, if you are interested, please head over there. Um, thank you everyone for today's session. And obviously thank you to Tim and um, Kim. All right, thanks everyone.